Hey, if you want to hear us discuss this same topic in a shorter video, there's a link in the description below. <gasps> What's up, breathing people? Welcome back. Today, I'm joined by my wife, Brittany, who is sick. And you're going to have to listen to her snot and cough <laughs> and snort and saliva <laughs> all over the table. And I'm not a beast. Other gross things. Um, today, we're going to be talking about... <laughs> It's, I don't know why it, introducing a serious subject with you in your state right now is so difficult, but we're going to be talking about how to find a godly or a Christian. <laughs> See, it just doesn't work, right? It doesn't work. How to find a Christian spouse. Is that what we said? A godly spouse godly spouse i like christian because it's a little more specific on the religion we're talking about because okay. you could have a lot of godly okay people and they're like i worship zeus <laughs> yeah. okay somebody who worships yeah christian okay christian spouse. yeah 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 do you want a pagan do you want a christian i mean you gotta be specific so how to find a christian spouse we're gonna talk about both men and women we're gonna talk about uh the things that you need to do prior to finding that person, what to do when you find that person, and how you continue in that relationship when you found them. So where do we want to start? Let's start with, I guess, I want to hear, do, right? No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I want to hear what your thoughts are. Like, how did you, I mean, I know part of the story, but people listening might know. You're half of it. I'm yeah. half of the story. But how did you find a godly spouse? Or a Christian spouse. Yeah, I always had that intention. I don't think there was ever a time that I was interested in somebody and I was, I ever took it seriously in my mind that I would date them if they weren't a Christian. Mm -hmm. Like there was definitely girls that I was attracted to and was good friends with. But I think similar to your story, I knew I wasn't going to date them. Mm -hmm. You know, there yeah. definitely was that attraction. There definitely was that chemistry, but I'm like, it would never happen, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't think there was ever a time that that intention wasn't on the table from the start. Mm -hmm. Any, uh, whatever I decided, now I'm going to be in the dating game. Now I'm, yeah, and of course, this is like high school, which is hilarious. Yeah. It's hilarious <laughs> when I see people in high school dating. I get it. I did it. It was awesome. Dating's fun. <laughs> but like, I was working at Wawa, mm -hmm. paying my car insurance yeah. and gas. Yeah. It's very temporary. I didn't have anything else mm -hmm. other than those two things. So, yeah. I, so you had intention. Yeah, I did. But have. I think you had a lot of other things in your mind that you're just not thinking of right now. Like, like let's say you saw a Christian girl. Yeah. But what's next? Like, you think she's attractive, but what's next? Like, what qualities mm. does she need to have for you to be like, oh, that person's not just a Christian. They're, like, they're seeking God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I know what you're talking about. Like, what made you think that I was somebody worth dating? Because you were pursuing God before you ever pursued me. Like, there's a lot of girls that maybe you meet on the pursuit. Yeah, They're already, they've already maybe known about you for a little bit. They've already kind of placed themselves in a position to pursue you. And then you kind of stumble into their awareness. Um, I think that's key. Yeah, I think pursuing God first and letting a person find you there, especially if that person, like if you're trying to find somebody that is a Christian uh, to be your future spouse, they're probably going to be following God before they ever follow you. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the best place to find that person in because now you have a standard that for the rest of my life, I want that person to be following God before he follows me. Yeah. 
that doesn't change. I think sometimes we think like, yeah, that was like that part of that person's life. And now they're about me. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa, you're placing yourself before God? Yeah. No, for the rest of your life, he or she is going to be pursuing God and you're going to be pursuing them after God. I think that's so key. That I mean, that was my experience too. I remember that was one of my prayers that the person that I would marry would be seeking God and be the one to reach out to me. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, that was really important to me. And I think that's key if you want to find a godly spouse. Yeah. If you're kind of not following God and doing your own thing, trying to find this person, I mean, maybe you'll find them, but how cool would it be to be pursuing God and then in that pursuit, you find somebody. And when you're in that pursuit, you're probably going to find the more of the right kind of person yeah. because they're also doing the same thing. Right. And so then you know, oh, we can now pursue God together. Yeah. So I feel like that's number one. Yeah. Yeah. When you're looking for. Have you ever been in a group of people and you're you're so focused on your friends in that group and you're so focused on you know, what's happening right there to with the people that are most important to you. And they have to point out an occurrence or a person outside of that group that you just were oblivious to beforehand. I, I think, I think that's the picture I have when I I'm pursuing God, like in our relationship, I was pursuing God wholeheartedly. He was the person that my vision was on mm-hmm. and I was totally focused. I was all about him. I was like, you. I just want you. All about you. And he was like, hey, turn around. I want you to see somebody. And it it threw me off because I'm like, no, this is my group. Mm-hmm. This is my people. You. Yeah. You know? And so when he, but he turned me around and he introduced me to you. That was I, an answer to my prayer. Well, I, and I think, <laughs> okay. So in terms of what to do when starting to venture into this pursuit of trying to find a Christian spouse, I think prayer is the start. That's, that's right. That's but, true. But you actually have to pray. See, unfortunately, a lot of us are running around here not honest with ourselves, and I'm going to be completely honest. I don't pray as much as I should. Mm-hmm. Now, back then, I was. Mm -hmm. Back then, I had a more diligent prayer life. I wasn't praying for a future spouse, though. It's kind of interesting because you were praying for that. I was at a place where I I knew I needed to give up that, Mm -hmm. surrender that part of my life because I was pursuing that instead of God. Gotcha. And so... We were in different places in that. Can I just interrupt you for a second? It's so funny how God works because I was kind of like the flip of that. Mm -hmm. So I was pursuing God and I was like, you're my number one God. But I had been praying for my future spouse for years. Yeah. I was such a nerd. (laughs) Um, But I was praying not just that I would find that person, but I was like praying for you. Like I didn't know you, but I was praying for like, God to strengthen you and to protect you and make you a leader and make you strong in the faith and all of these things for you uh, before I even met you. So my prayer was like, I'm going hard after you, God. So whoever this is that I've been praying for, like you have to make them reach out to me. Mm. So I was never going, I was like, you have to put this person in front of me because I'm after you. So that's up to you, God. Wow. So I think that's so funny how God kind of tapped you on the shoulder because he, he yeah. was like, Brittany's never going to notice you. Right. You have to reach right. out to her. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. <clears throat> Bold prayers. So prayer is first. Prayer is first. But I, oh man, I like <clears throat> what you were just saying, though. Bold prayers. A lot of times we're just kind of wishy-washy. We're kind of watered down in our prayers. And we're like... I'd like him to be like maybe kind of, I mean, he could kind of be attractive, God. I I don't know. 
<laughs> Maybe <laughs> he could have hair <laughs> or... I feel like that's a Christian prayer sometimes where yeah. we're like, God, give me something okay. It's a fearful prayer. That's a fearful <sighs> prayer. Because you're like, I... Yeah. Because I can identify with that. It's like, I don't know if you're going to give this to me, so I'm going to kind of pray this prayer. Mm, we're going to curb our prayers. Mm -hmm. We're going to kind of be like, well, I hope I get something, so I'm not going to ask too big. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think there's power in, if God, like at that time, I was also was single, so I had plenty of time to dedicate to the Lord, right? Yeah. So I felt very close to him, and I had that, like he had gifted me that faith to believe that. Yeah. So I was, I could pray in confidence. Yeah, no, it's, I think that's key is to be bold in your prayers, to pray with that confidence that he loves you. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives us confidence, that he does desire good for our lives. Yeah. He desires the best for our lives, especially in the areas he knows will be make the most powerful impact on this world. Yeah. And I think God knows I, I don't think. I know God mm -hmm. knows that a married couple that is pursuing him is an unstoppable force in this Amen. culture. And it's the one thing that this culture is struggling most at. So the more strong, God-centered married couples that there are, the greater the impact's going to be on culture yeah. because everything is pushing back against that. Everything is pushing back against you know, these beautiful monogamous relationships mm -hmm. that are, you know, rooted in God, rooted in biblical ideas and, and practices that are rooted in a found and, and have a foundation that's unshakable. Yeah. You and know? that leads me to like, even think, even as you're saying that, how do you, you know, how do you get confident in God's love for you mm -hmm. in order to make those bold prayers yeah. and to be that rooted couple that you're just talking about right there. I think so many times, especially when you're single and you're young, you're looking for that spouse to complete you or yeah. to make you feel that love that you're searching for. And that's a little dangerous so I would say the the prayer and the seeking God is kind of goes back and forth, right? Because you right. do want to be praying for that spouse if that's what you're looking for. Right. But at the same time, you want to, you diligently want to seek God. I mean, that's kind of obvious, but to know his love so that you're solid in him without that person. Right. You need to be completed in Christ before you look for a person to complete you. Yes. Because yeah. that that's going to cause issues. Mm -hmm. So you want to, yeah, be fully completed in Christ and be seeking. Sure. Uh, and then, and then pray or mm -hmm. both at the same time, right? Both at the same time. And then God will bring that person into your life if yeah. that's his will for you. Yeah. And yeah. No, that's good. That's a great place to start. <laughs> One thing that I wrote down as like a next step to prayer is once you have prayed and you believe God is, is sending you out to pursue relationships for the purpose of finding that Christian spouse, mm -hmm. you need to be forward in every one of those relationships. Mm -hmm. Like from, from the time that someone says, let's go out you're texting them just being like, yo, I'm so on fire for God right now. What, where are you at with that? <laughs> hey, I'm like praying about this right now. What do you think about that? Hey, I just read this. What's your, uh, what's your kind of insight into this verse? Amen. Like you need to be so on fire and up front with your faith that that person either needs, will he, he or she will either back down or they will step up. I love that. That like gives me goosebumps. That's wisdom. Well, I, it's integrity too. Yes. Because I think a lot of us are walking around in our relationships with a lot of lies. Mm. Maybe not lies. Maybe that's too harsh. Maybe it's too harsh. A lot of deception. 
It's mm-hmm. the same thing. Yeah. But we're masking parts mm-hmm. of our lives in order to, in our brains, seem more attractive oh, for that yeah. other person. Right? That's so funny you say that because when I was thinking through things, I was integrity. I was like thinking of seeking God first, but integrity was my next one. Mm-hmm. How important that is. And yeah, so being up front right away, being who you are. Yes. And so that's like on your part. And then on the other person's part, you want to make sure that they're a person of integrity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Making sure, are they the same person that you see in public as they are in private? Yeah. As they are with everybody else. Right. And what are they speaking and doing like is their speech and doing in line mm-hmm. you know They're, yeah the right person can handle you yeah the right person can there that's a good point like why why hide things yes if you're looking for somebody that you're going to spend the rest of your life with mm-hmm. because yeah if god created them for you, like, if he knows that you're going to be together, yeah, he made it right. Yep, and that person can handle you. I love mm-hmm. that. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Now we do present sometimes parts of us, or or we 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 amplify parts of us that aren't truly who we are. That can be annoying. Mm-hmm. That can be overbearing. Can you explain that? So there can be times where there are certain personality, uh, certain personality traits that. In order to impress people, in order to, I don't know what goes through our minds when we do this, but we'll amplify certain parts of ourselves. That's not really true to us. It's just, it may be an aspect of who we are, Mm -hmm. but it's not really the fullness of it. And it's not really the thing that makes us, us. It's what we think makes us exciting. What we think makes us fun. Yeah. Makes us someone that people want to be around. But a lot of times it has the opposite effect on the other person where we could come off as overbearing. We could come off as, I don't know, clingy. We could come off as, you know, something that we never intended to present as the person, you know, as this is who I am to that other person. And that, and that's natural to do I think without even realizing it sure like as you're saying that I'm like I'm pretty sure I totally totally did that yeah. uh the way around that is to be honest with yourself yeah and if you notice you're doing that yeah kind of take time to think through yeah. why am I doing that where's this insecurity lie yeah seek the Lord in that and it can go the opposite and then way be yourself yeah I just want to like I just want to say I was pointing out a lot more extroverted personality traits, but there also can be a lot of introverted personality traits that also get exemplified either for humility or like a false humility sake Mm. where we try to be more pious than we actually Mm. are or I feel like I've seen that. Yeah. Or, or there's, you know, I'm trying to think of like a more introverted, I'm not, introverted. So I'm trying to think of more introverted personality traits that people will put on that really are a turn. It could be a Mm turnoff to somebody. And it's not really who we are. We're not really that introverted. We're not really that passive or that, um, oh man, personality traits for introverted people. I don't know, (laughs) but, uh, but those, I'm just (laughs) thinking of somebody that kind of goes into themselves when that's not really who they are, you know, they could, right. but they're, but they're doing it maybe from pr- for protection's sake. Yeah. They're trying to protect themselves from certain things <clears throat> and that's not good either. Yeah. It kind of goes back to making sure you're rooted in Christ first. Yeah. Um, not that you're still gonna, you're still gonna have to work through things, even if you like, God's always going to be showing you things to work through, but being rooted in him, I think is going to help you when you do start getting into relationships yeah. and dating to not be afraid of who, who you are and who God created you to be and being, being able to be more honest and open and just being yourself. Mm-hmm. That's going to be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. 
what are some of the other traits? So we, we kind of touched on integrity, being who you actually are, not trying to put on some persona yeah. of what you think the other person might want you to be for the purpose of the relationship, because that doesn't last. Yes. You, there's definitely things that I put on when we were dating, mm-hmm. you put on when we were dating, that that gets thrown aside once you're married. The person's going to find out eventually. They're going to find out. (laughs) You might as well show them before you're married, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and because it is something that is difficult to work through after. Yeah. It's tough. Mm -hmm. It's tough. Oh, man. I really wasn't honest about this being something I liked to do. Yes. (laughs) Or Or not like. Like not. Yeah. 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 (laughs) So what, what are some other traits that you look for in a person that, could be your future Christian spouse. Yeah, so humility. And keep in mind, like, as we're saying these things to look for, that goes for, you want to work on those things, being sure. those things. Yeah. But then also assessing, is this other person these things? But the next one would be humility for me. Like, I think, you know, I want to find somebody. You? Humility? I know. You want to find somebody seeking God first. Integrity. Yep. Humility is like my third one. Yeah, that changes everything in my mind. Some it, you have to be. You want to marry somebody who's humble, right? Because um, you can't always be right. No, you can't. And there are people that think that they are always right. Yeah. I've thought that. Uh, yeah, I've thought that. It's pride. Mm-hmm. It is complete pride. There are people in this world other than yourself. Yeah. And that's something that I, I legitimately had to work through. I legitimately had to learn because not that I, I wasn't kind to others, not that I didn't do for others, not that I didn't encourage people. You're good at but, all those things. Yeah, but when it came to when it came to actually believing that they could be right about something I disagreed with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That was tough. Yeah. That was tough. And the reason why humility is so important is because the person has to be able to, they have to be humble enough to work through that Mm -hmm. or else they will not change. Right. And that is scary to get in a lifelong relationship with somebody who will not change. Right. Right. Even if they're wrong. Yeah. You don't think they're wrong. Yeah. And so that's why humility is so important. And it really makes for a beautiful marriage because you both can say, if you're both humble, you can go to each other and communicate and one person can say, you're right, I was wrong. And the the next time the other person can be like, right, I was wrong, I shouldn't have done that. And sometimes it's even beautiful in that that person, you don't even have to confront that person because that person will come to you and be like, I'm sorry I did that. Mm -hmm. You know, the person doesn't even have to say, hey, you did this or you were wrong about this or whatever it is. The person will sometimes just come and be like, I was wrong when I said that or I was wrong when I did that or whatever it is. That's so valuable. Yeah, that's so valuable. That's going to make your relationship rich. It's going to make you be able to forgive each other, give grace to each other, change, become the better people that you're supposed to be together. Yeah. Yeah. And so you want to see that in your dating relationship before you get married. If you don't see that in your dating relationship, that would be a problem. Right. In my eyes. Right. Especially in a time where the person is trying to woo you, Mm -hmm. (laughs) is trying to be in a position of of giving themselves to you, yeah, you know, in different ways. Um, yeah, if you don't see it there, that's a sign that that person has some more work to do. We got to go back to, is this, pers- is this person pursuing God? Yeah, and I think the best way to, like, figure those things out is to, as soon as you have a question kind of pop up in your mind, I'm, I'm saying this from my failed failures because I did not do this, this advice I'm about to give. (laughs) Like when you have a question pop up in your mind about the other person, you should just ask it right away. Mm -hmm. I was not that great at communicating as we both know when we were dating. We're still still working on it. But 
that would have been so helpful for us to work through things even faster. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I I just think that's worth saying because when you're in this dating relationship, a lot of times you like the person and you really want it to go well and that desire for it to go well might keep you silent. Sure, yeah. But you really want to ask those questions. Like if you if you notice something, you think it's, you know, you think it's pride or you think it's disgenuine, right? Just ask the question. You don't have to do it in like a threatening way, you know, or a, um, I can't think of the word. Um, like condemning or? No, like you don't have to make it so confrontational. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even though confrontation isn't bad, but you can like just do it in a gentle way, just be like, hey, what did you mean by that? Mm -hmm. Or when you said that, like, I thought you meant this. Is that what you meant? Right. Or whatever question it is that you have, you should ask that. Yeah. And and then that will help you find out, oh, well, that was just my misunderstanding. Or, hmm, that's interesting. That was, maybe that's pride. Or maybe, you know, he's not being genuine there. What's... What's that about, sure. you know? But don't keep those questions in your head or just presume the best because you want to keep things rosy. <clears throat> you need to ask those questions. Yeah, ask those questions for sure. Yeah. For sure. What, what else? Um, kind. Hmm. Being kind. Yeah. It's kind of a simple a simple one, but I think that's important. Mm-hmm. Like, I I feel like you were, you're, you've always been good at being kind. Um, but that's, really important not just are they kind to you but are they just are they a kind of person i feel like we've talked yeah. about this a lot before but how do they treat just everyday people that yeah. they meet yeah um how do they treat people in the grocery store yeah. at church at home everywhere mm-hmm. <laughs> keep your eyes out how do they treat them are they kind yeah because the way they treat the people that aren't important to them I think says a lot about a person Mm -hmm. and if they can treat those people kindly or even people that annoy them kindly, Mm -hmm. that's going to show you how they're going to treat you at home. Right. Um, hopefully they'll treat you way better because they love you. If they marry you, you know, I know, but, uh, that's not always the case. That's not always the case. And if they're genuinely a kind of person, they're going to treat people who they don't know or even care about kindly. Right. And then that's going to show you, if they're a kind person or not. Yeah. One thing that my dad always says that I I do think is one of the, the best uh, catchphrases that he's come up with. And it's that nice is neither a gift nor a fruit of God's yeah. Holy Spirit. Yeah. Kindness is. And kindness isn't always nice. Yes. And I just want to make that distinction. Beca- Explain that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I want to make the distinction between nice and kindness like there is a difference between Mm -hmm. the two Mm -hmm. nice in the word itself in the connotation of the word itself is a i've kindness can be a choice as well nice is like, like a smoothing over right right and it's something that you don't have to believe in or be honest about or be honest about to do it. Mm-hmm. Kindness actually has to be a heart condition. Yeah. Like it actually has to be something that comes from a place of deep seated love for people to be genuine. I think without that, then it's always nice. Kindness says hard things. Yeah. It does, it does have a component of discipline in it Mm -hmm. and discipline i'm not talking about like spiking your child or i'm not talking about getting up in the morning and running a mile like self-controlled yes i'm talking about like the ability to say hard things i'm talking about the ability when your friend or a person that's in front of you you know that you need to say the hard thing Mm -hmm. to them because you care for them yes your ability to say it is your kindness. And you, so you are good at that. And I think that that's so valuable, valuable because in this culture, like niceness is elevated. Yeah. And that's great. I mean, it feels good. It feels good when people are nice, but that's actually not always kind. Like we're saying, 
And some you want somebody in your life who's going to say to you, hopefully not in public, <laughs> the kind thing would be like <laughs> when you get back in the car or something like, why did you say that? That really hurt that person. Or I'm just trying to think of examples. Um, I'm going blank. But no, they say no. they say the hard thing to you in a loving way. Hey, you probably shouldn't have another drink. Yeah. Yeah. And like just being being honest with that person so that they can become a better person. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's really hard to say. Like yeah. I I just thought of an example cuz you gave me an idea like let's say I'm trying to lose weight, okay? And it kind of kind of goes with the drink thing, but I'm eating like four desserts already, right? <laughs> you would be, you might be like, you shouldn't have another dessert. Well, you know, yeah, like, yeah. like the drink thing, or um, I guess that's exactly like the drink one. But yeah, I think that's really important is to have somebody that you can trust to tell you the truth, even when you might not want to hear it. Yep. Is really valuable. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, honesty in that kindness is so important. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, it's not kindness. No. There always has to be honesty backing it. There has to be honesty infused in your words that you're speaking to be kind, in the actions that you're relaying to that other person to be kind. Without those, it's just niceness, and you're not really in it. I, 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 it's a weird dynamic because obviously you can be nice to somebody, mm -hmm. but you know that your heart's not in it. You know that your in that 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 your soul or whatever right. is not behind that action. Yeah. And for the person that you want to be your future spouse, they have to have that. Yeah. They have to have that soul and spirit and and heart behind their kindness. I never heard it explained that way. And I think that hits it right on the head that it has to be genuine, like from the heart, like kindness puts the other person first, really. Like you're, you're think you're almost going out of your way to care for the other person Yeah, is kindness. Yeah. Whereas niceness is just saying what you know would make the other person feel good so that you can move on with your yes. life. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. But how many times in Christian marriages have you seen people kind of want to move on from their spouse? Mm. How many times have you seen their spouse speak and the other person is just kind of aloof that they're even communicating? Yeah. Yeah. Their heart's gone. They they don't they're not kind anymore. They don't yeah. want to hear. Yeah. They have no intention of engaging. Oof with that other person mm -hmm. they're gone yeah that's why that intention needs to be there before you get married uh and that heart needs to be there before you get married so that it carries over into yeah. the marriage and it's and it's a habit that can be formed before you get married too yes we're like you're used to feeling each other out in that way that would be optimal yeah because then you can know when it's backing off yeah and you can call it out yeah that's the thing. If you didn't go into the marriage really feeling the heart and, and soul of that other person <clears throat> in the kindness that they displayed to you, yeah, you're not going to know when it's being pulled away. Right. And there's going to be times in the marriage that it's going to be pulled away. It's mm -hmm. going to, they're going to back off and just not be as kind. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able to say to that person, Hey, I'm seeing an issue here. I'm yeah. seeing that we're getting to a point where that kindness is just not what it used to be. Yes. How do we get back? Yeah. How do, how do we? Yeah. <laughs> and it, it goes, then it goes to being an integrous person, right? Because if going off of that situation, that person hopefully will be genuine and honest to say whatever it is that has made them withdraw. Right. Been bothering them. or Yeah. Instead of just making something up to get you off their back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what else? What other things do you need to have in place to find a Christian spouse? I mean, those are key ones. I think there's a lot. I mean, yeah. I would I mean, just some of the ones that like came to my mind when I was thinking on this is being gentle as mm. well. 
Yeah. And and when I say that, you might have more um, discernment into this, but gentle in, I guess it goes away, it goes along with kindness as well, but just gentle in the way that they communicate and then the way that they act. Yeah. That they're not like a forceful person. Mm-hmm. Um, gentleness. I'm trying to think of the word that I want to say. Gentleness kind of means that they they let you decide for yourself, mm-hmm. right? They're not a pushy person. They're not a presumptuous person. They in they want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Um, and they can make an argument respectfully, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um. I would, at least me personally, like I would never want to marry someone who's just like, I mean, this goes back to the humility as well, but who's just like, you're, you need to just do it my way. Like yeah. whatever. Like if they communicate in a harsh way, they're not gentle in their communication. Like I don't want to be treated like that. Yeah. And I don't want to have to communicate like that. I don't want to have to be like all up in arms to like communicate, <laughs> Yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, so I think gent- being a gentle person, it doesn't mean that like they're passive. It doesn't right. mean that they're like weak. Right. That has nothing to do with being gentle. Right. Like I can see some, I, you see, I see the biggest guys be so gentle with a child mm-hmm. or with their spouse, mm-hmm. but then like you don't mess with their family because right. they will destroy you. Mm-hmm. They are still gentle. Yeah. And uh, I think that that's valuable. Sure. When no, you- I think it's, it's the most valuable. I think it, if any man speaks to his spouse or his children in a way other than gentleness, they failed. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm not I'm not innocent mm-hmm. of that by any means. But like I said, that was a failure mm-hmm. on my part. And I need to come back and I need to, in humility, apologize. And in humility, say to my kids, like, dad shouldn't have spoken to you in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, because they need to see that dichotomy in a person, yes. that it exists, that you can go out and rule and subdue in this world. Mm-hmm. You were made for that. You yeah. were made to not be to live in fear or, or not be pushed around by anyone. And to those that you're in relationship with, this is how you communicate. Yes. And I think the best example of that, since we're looking for a Christian spouse, is to look to Jesus. Yes. Jesus wasn't Amen. a pushover. No. Jesus was actually very volatile in many instances in the New Testament. I mean, you just have to look at even near the end when you're like, oh, but that time where he lost and he was going to be crucified. And you, and you think about how he didn't even make a case for himself. Like when he was before uh, Pontius Pilate or when he was before uh, Caiaphas, the priest, like he was given opportunities. And the only times he spoke was just to confirm something that was already spoken by someone else. Yeah. You know, when he would confirm something that Caiaphas had said, and they'd be like, oh my gosh, blasphemy. Mm -hmm. And they'd beat him. Yeah. Like that, even though he appeared to be defeated in that instance, he showed strength. He was not afraid. That gentleness was strength. Yeah. 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 And then I think just in the way that he was able to treat those that he cared about with that patience and with that gentleness and with that slowness to anger. Um, Yeah, it's the prime example of what a gentle leader uh, can look like. Yeah, I love that comparison. That's that's good. And I'm like going back to like the kindness because I'm thinking of the times where he's gentle. Mm -hmm. And then you think of the times where you're like, ooh, Jesus just did that, yikes. (laughs) And I'm like, not that kindness always looks like that, but sometimes kindness is kind of like, oh, because, wait, 
because Jesus wanted what was best for those people and everyone else around them. And so sometimes even kindness can kind of look like, oh, but that's because hopefully that person is acting for your best good and pointing out something for your best good. Right, right. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought up that example. Yeah. And just Gentleness to take that, is strength. That's good. Just to take that a little bit further to what you were just saying for the good of those around him and also for themselves, for the good of themselves. Mm, mm-hmm. Because, you know, I, I've really been trying to do a lot more self work mm-hmm. because I understand that the only way I can effectively love others is if I love myself. I mean, that verse love others as you love yourself only works if there's a self to love. Yeah. And if your self is just gone Mm -hmm. because you've done so little work to accept who God made you to be and to accept you for who he made you to be and what he made you to do in this life, you can't love others. Mm -mm. Not well, not well. So a lot of the work, that I think we also can do in relationship and we want to make sure we're doing before we get married to somebody as if we can in kindness, call things out that would affect us and see how that person reacts. Yeah. You know, it's kind to say, Hey, advice. I I don't know if you meant this, like, and I think we talked about this earlier. I don't know if you meant this, but this is how it affected me. What do you think of that? You're going to see you know, who that person is. Yeah, if they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't know that affected you in that way. That's just how my family has like speaks to That's each other. Humility. Yeah. Then you can be like, cool. I just wanted to see, you know, in kindness, I wanted to say that because I love you enough that I want to continue in this relationship. And I will cut this off if the response is pride. Yeah. I will cut that off if you're going to be defensive yeah. about everything that you do. Yeah. Because that's a lack of humility. Right. You know? So I, I think that's that's super important. Love yourself. Wow. Love yourself. It goes back to like seeking God, right? Being rooted in God. Like yeah. it's like <clears throat> all these things like run in a line together. Like they all have to be kind of going at the same time because they play off of each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Having all of these things going if you mess up with one, you have another one to lean on, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So that's good. Let's just kind of review. I think the first step, if you're going to find a Christian spouse, is to pray. Yeah. And I love, I love what you said. Pray boldly. I think you said that. I said that. Well. Good job. You you displayed it. <laughs> yeah. I just put a label on it. Uh, but bold <laughs> prayer, I think, is super important. And then once you are out there getting in relationships, be forward about mm-hmm. who you are, about what God is to you, mm-hmm. what what your Christian life is to you, so that that person has no room to wiggle around yes. that. You're yeah, up it- in their face about this part of your life because it's most important to you and it needs to be most important to them if we're even going to continue. Right. That's a great way to just kind of like, nope, nope. Yeah, that's nope, true. no. Oh, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, does that lot- go along with like seeking God first? Like pray, seek God first and be upfront? Where does the seeking God first go in there? Prayer. In prayer. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully we're seeking God. Prayer in and seeking God. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the way that you seek God. And I, I think we only can really be in charge of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I think it's in that being up front with that person about where we're at, we can see where, where they're, they're at. at. Mm-hmm. Um, so making sure that we're asking that question, where are you with God right now? How's your relationship with him? How's your prayer life? Are you reading the Bible? Like, And if that's awkward to talk about, if that's awkward to on. ask, move that on. Might, yeah, that's not It good. could be a person that's immature spiritually or maybe new to the faith. Mm-hmm. That's okay. They're not ready to marry you yet. And I know, I know that's hard because people are like, well, so I'm never supposed to pursue that person or no one's ever supposed to pursue that person. No, someone is. Yeah. Later. Yeah. 
Because mm-hmm. that person can't actually be for that other person, whoever they're going to be, right? until they're further along yeah. spiritually. Mm-hmm. It's not going to work because they still carry too much of who they were and they need to get rid of that to become who God made them to right. be. Right. It's a, there's a difference. Yeah. If there's a difference. Mm-hmm. You know, you can get saved, you can be going in the right direction, but yeah, there's I've, a maturity that needs to be there to be considered a Christian mm-hmm. spouse. Yeah, there's levels you, to this game. It's like if you notice, and tell me what you think about this, because maybe I'm off on this. But if you notice the person that like you want to date is like super, like you have to drag them along in your faith, that's not good, right? Yeah. Like it's it's kind of feels bad to say like you want to you want to level up when you, right. when you but like you want to date like I that was one of the things that I knew was important to me when I was date when I was dating is like the person that I dated, I didn't want to carry them along in the no. faith. Like I wanted to them to be right alongside me or ahead of me. Like I did not want to drag anybody because yeah. they're going to slow me down. So when that verse in the Bible <clears throat> talks about being unequally yoked. So in the Bible, uh, Bible times, cattle would, you know, there be, when they were plowing the fields, there would be two cattle and there would be a yoke that would be attached to the plow mm-hmm. and the person would ride the plow and they would walk forward and plow the fields. And if one of those cattle were smaller than the other, it would be lopsided and the plow would not go in a straight path. Wow. So they needed it to be balanced. So you needed two cattle that were approximately the same size. Yeah. And it's a, and when the Bible says you shouldn't be unequally yoked in marriage, that's what it's talking about. You need to be at the same level spiritually. And people think it means like a non-Christian and a Christian. It could just mean that you're just out of whack in terms of your spiritual maturity. Yeah. That that one person is is further along than the other. It's still going to curve, curve you off track yeah. of where you want to go. You want to be on that straight path in your mm-hmm. marriage where there's progression. Yeah. If you're off to the side and you're going this way and that. It's going to be cumbersome. Whew, it's going to be a rough ride. Mm-hmm. So pray, seek God, be up front, be forward with your with who you are in that relationship. Yeah. Um in every dating relationship. Don't get don't don't get slack on some of the uh yeah. relationships because you really like the guy. Yes. Or the girl. Uh be up front. That's the most important thing. And then look for those traits that we discussed: the humility, the integrity, and the kindness. kindness. Mm-hmm. I think those are good. I I feel like if you're able to nail all of those things, all of those other traits that you look for in a person, they'll be much more visible because you kind of have the other stuff done. The other stuff kind of out of the way. Yeah. Um, That integrity and humility are like key. Yeah. Because if somebody needs to grow and they're not humble or honest, they're not. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So look for those things. I think that'll help anybody uh, in their relationships. Maybe not even dating relationships, too. I think these are things that are for any relationship that you're in. That's true. But if you're dating for, or if you're going to look for a Christian spouse to date, these are the steps. Mm -hmm. These are the things that we did, and we were successful in our dating relationship, married 10 years. Mm -hmm. Do these things. Yeah. Just follow us. You know, I'm totally on board with the concept of follow me as I follow Christ, yeah. as Paul talked about. Yeah. That's what we're trying to communicate in all of these podcasts and videos are follow me as I follow Christ. We're trying to pursue Christ. We're trying to look back on how Christ moved in our lives yes. and just tell people about that. Yeah. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Uh, Brittany's going to blow her nose now, <laughs> sneeze, cough, do all the things that are gross that she didn't want to show on camera today. <laughs> Aren't you lucky? Uh, I'll see you next time. We love you all. Goodbye.